Hello, I am sitting here with Kimberly, who Hi, is everybody. the brains behind VP Bali. And a lot of people had questions about my experience here and how to get involved and what's going on here. So I thought I would go directly to the source and answer some of your questions and give more details about my time here. So right off the bat, not only is Kim here to answer questions right now she is here every single day she's at school with you every single day so you're not just like dropped off into a foreign country and have nowhere to go and have no idea what's going on um true she's your contact person she's also the person who responds to all of your emails answers all of your questions so i don't actually know how she does all of those things but multitasking we're <laughs> women somehow so we can she does um so really quickly you can find out a lot of information on their website which is volunteerprogramsbali.org. And you can email Kim directly at info at volunteerprogramsbali.org. So if I don't answer anything here, that is your direct source. Um, so I guess we'll just like get started. Yeah. What is, how do people get involved? So we have the application, you fill it out online. Yeah, and then, respond. yeah, so the application comes in, so we're putting the link also, so you fill in your application, it's a little bit, you know, background, you know, where you're from, what is your birthday, um, you know, your age, uh, your experiences, why you wanted to volunteer, uh, so we go through that and then we'll see also the dates you put in, if there is any availability. Uh, if you match all the requirements, then we'll send you an email back. We always answer it in the 24 hours because that's important oh, for us. So we want to go quick. Oh, We're not going to just wait for a week before <laughs> you get an answer. No, no, no. So, um, and then, um, so after that, it's really simple. We make it quite easy and informative in the emails. So we put all the steps there, like uh, what to expect. Um, so after the application, if you um, ask for a certain period of time to come, we accept you. And then we tell you like what are the next steps to follow and we keep following up with you with the emails until you're actually here with the pickup of actually the airport. Um, at the airport, there is our drivers, you get the welcome letter, you get orientations, you see me, and then you actually also go to school and, you know, you know, help and teach the, the, the children and you also meet me. So. Um, do you need to have any, do you need to be a teacher? Do you need to have any special requirements, any age things? Well, uh, teacher, no. I always say the non-teachers are the best ones. Don't get offended if you guys are a teacher. <laughs> but um, what we try to do with VP Bali is actually, how do you say that, um, to teach in a totally different way. So we try to adapt like how the Balinese learn. We do it in a fun, creative way. So you know, they go already to school. So it needs to be something, you know, it's not, it needs to be something that they can use in their near future. So it needs to be fun, creative. Um, so it's actually easier for non-teachers to adapt because it's something totally new. It's a, yes, there is a curriculum, there is lesson plans, there is all of that. Um, but it's totally different than the standards. Right, you know. there's also a lot of hangman and charades and, and stickers. stickers. Love it. stickers. So yeah, so I don't think like you can be a teacher, but it's not required. And you don't always need to be a native speaker because that's a lot of questions that people ask me. Mm -hmm. um, it's great, uh, but you know, your English need not, needs not, like me, blah, 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 <laughs> does not need to be perfect. Needs not be perfect. perfect. <laughs> that said, with a cup of tea. Um, because actually, uh, the main reason is also that our kids come in contact with different nationalities, different types of English. Uh, so because later on they're going to work in tourism, so that's where they're going to come in contact with all those different type of people and they don't speak all perfectly English. So they need to get used to Australian accent, American, uh, <clears throat> so, um, so um, excuse me, my mom is actually <laughs> making noise for the video. Hi Kim's mom! Uh, so, uh, <laughs> it's alright, don't worry about it. Um, so it's about, first of all, that they learn the different uh, nationalities, uh, that not everybody speaks perfect English, but also get in touch with different cultures so that later on when they work with them, uh, they know also what to expect and they can learn that already from a young age. Yeah. Now, age-wise, like you said, uh, we do restriction for, oops, sorry, for maximum 35 it's not that you guys are not welcome i'm older than 35 so no yes i am <laughs> uh, so no everybody is welcome but in general we see that we have 
a really young audience and that um, it's between 18, 18 and 25 uh, on average. So people take a gap year. Um, so, um, so they're traveling around. Um, so I think also for them, it's nicer if you come and you're a little bit older to sit between all the younger ones. Sometimes it doesn't really match like into a, the in the group. Right. Um, I think most of them, if they're older than 35, uh, they mostly come in to uh, contribute or give workshops where we go in up later. We'll explain a little bit more later on. Um, so I think for volunteering itself, it's more a younger audience. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a lot of gap. But what is really cool is it is people from all over the world. And there's definitely people that it's not like you have to speak perfect English. You can it. totally, totally, totally help too. Um, and then is there a minimum amount of time that you have to stay to volunteer? Yes, so we say the minimum is two weeks. It's not ideal two weeks, um, but we do understand that a lot of people want to actually give their time. So two uh, weeks and longer. And longer, yeah. So, and you know, we don't want to discriminate people, you know, and say you cannot come. Right. But two weeks is actually the minimum. It is quite short. Um, uh, most of the people on an average stay between six and eight weeks. Some stay three months, some stay longer than three months. If you want to stay longer than three months, uh, you can book three months and then we see on the spot that you can extend them. Uh, because sometimes people after three months are like, okay, you know, I'm good. Okay, I'm good. Yeah. Uh, and some people stay like six months or a wow. year because I have that time. But it needs to be in two ways. It needs to be beneficial also for the kids and you that the person itself needs to be comfortable also so uh, we play a little bit by ear so starting from two weeks you can do three weeks four weeks five six up to three months after three months it's then on the spot with me that we can see that we can uh, take it longer or not which i initially i didn't really understand why it had to be a minimum of two weeks but kim explained to me and it makes so much sense it's so nice that people want to just pop into school and say hi, 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 and give hugs to all the kids. And obviously that feels great and it's fun in the moment, but if you flip that around, imagine being that kid and then just constantly having people come in, not really dedicating their time. You just get kind of hugs and stickers and then somebody's gone. That's not really realistic. And yeah. um, even after two weeks, it's really hard. You get attached to the kids, the kids get really attached for you. And it's, it's a sad day when you leave because you've built that connection. So um, while it's so nice to want to give your time for a shorter period of time, it, it really does go a long way when you're actually able to be here and make that connection. Um, so for people that can't really understand that, because I thought I was like, well, why wouldn't you just have people like coming in, let's play soccer, yeah. let's do this. Like, it's nice, but it's just not, it's not realistic. Fair on, it's not fair on the kids. And it's like, yeah. like I always say like, you know, we're not Disneyland, you know? Yeah. So, and it's not nice. And I think mentally, psychologically for the kids, it's also not done. Uh, so it's not, they're not an attraction either way. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, everybody's welcome. Don't get me wrong. We have a lot of people come over and visit, but I like to, you know, organize that and um, make sure that the impact is in a correct way towards the kids. Yeah. It's my kids. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm very protective out of my kids. So, <laughs> um, you know, we're here to help them and to get them a better future. So, you know, it's, it's like, it's not, we're not, I don't want people to, it's not using, it's not the right word, but, Right. You know, it's not it's, just a photo op yeah. and a fun yeah. day no, of no. playing with some local. It, no, it is, no, which makes it. a lot of sense because we yeah. had that conversation last time I was yeah, here. Definitely, and it yeah. definitely did yeah. click. I was like, why don't you just use it for exposure and people can come in instant? And then I was like, that is mm -hmm. the dumbest question. I can't believe that I even said that. Mm -hmm. So there's that. It's answer. all right. Anna. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of people have questions about the costs that are associated with VP Bali. So can we go yeah. into, obviously it's different depending on how much time you're here because it's living yeah. expenses, but just briefly what those costs kind of are and then where that money actually goes. goes. Yeah. So uh, you have a administ administration fee and a registration fee. Uh, so everything is uh, marked on the website. Uh, in, all the prices are in Indonesia rupiah uh, because we are in Indonesia. So it doesn't cost 1 million US dollars <laughs> no, to volunteer. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's rupiah, so it's okay, not 1 million US dollar. No, no, no. You, well, when you're here, you're a millionaire. So that is nice. It's a nice feeling. So yes, if you want to be a millionaire, come to Bali and you feel it straight away. No, so all our prices are in uh, Indonesian rupiah. Um, so I'm, I'm not really comfortable in talking about 
uh, in terms of this is how much it costs in uh, euros or in dollars right. because it depends on the rates. Uh, so I think it's best if you guys uh, just click on the link with the volunteering and the program fees. So uh, they're, um, they're on there and then you can just do the exchange rate uh, because you know the dollar, euro, or whatever you are, it's you know it changes oh, yeah, all totally the time. Yeah. So in six months, I mean, it can be che cheaper or more expensive for you. For us, you know, it stays the same thing. Right. So of course, the longer you stay, the cheaper it gets. Um, what is included? So once you arrive, um, the driver will pick you up at the airport. So that is first included. Uh, you have always me as a contact or an emergency. I'm always there to help you to answer all your questions, email personally, phone call, whatever it I is. I definitely harassed him the first time that I came mm -hmm. here. So, so a lot of people like 400 that. emails. <laughs> but it's normal because, you know, you need to feel good about it. And I can understand that yeah. if you've got, you know, all those questions. Uh, secondly, your accommodation is included. Um, so there was and a breakfast. And breakfast. Yes, true. <laughs> Pancakes are so good. They're really good up here. Uh, accommodation. Uh, so it's nice also that everybody stays in the same um, homestay. So you're staying actually with a family. There is uh, two families. Um, and that way, uh, your money will go straight away to not only the kids, but also helping families up here. So these are families that I picked out in the beginning that were really, really struggling and they really needed the money. So in that way, they have like a regular income. Uh, it's not a, you know, three star, four star hotel. It's very basic, but it's also at the other hand, you're not just helping the family, but you live the Balinese life. So you see the ins and the outs, like, you know, what they're doing, but like you see like they're making offerings, you can play with the kids, if there are ceremonies, how they cook, how they live. So your room is actually, I'm not gonna exaggerate, it's basic, you know, you share a room. Bed, yeah. yeah, you have your bed, you have a small closet, you know, you have the shower, nothing is fancy. There is no air conditioning, you have a fan. Um, yeah, okay. air conditioning. <laughs> That's it. So you're really gonna live the, the you know the life of you know real Balinese. And trust me, you're never gonna be in your room. You know, you yeah. just you're gonna so pass up. You know, in the evening, morning, it's just showering, and that's it. You're always outside. Like, you really do feel like you're living like a local, though, too. You're yeah. in the middle of the town. You walk out. You can walk to everything yeah. you would need to walk to. Yeah. You're, it, it doesn't feel like you're just, like, on this vacation and, like, popping in. You really feel like you're part of the culture, yeah. which I love. Yeah, and that was very important for me also because you guys, you know, you, you're helping those families, but at the same time, you guys are not a tourist. You're helping, but you you can see and experience something that other the tourists cannot Absolutely. and and on top of that the, the location is really good like you said you know Amazing. you can walk everywhere there's like i don't know how many restaurants or healthy or food and, and it's cheap you know yeah. everything is there walking distance so you don't need to organize like taxis or motorbikes mm -hmm. and etc which i have a million food recommendations if you do come and you're also right by the monkey forest which is just be very careful because they'll steal everything, but they're so cute. They are cute. <laughs> they are very cute. Don't talk bad about my family. <laughs> so yeah, so it's like your accommodation is included, your pickup from the airport. And then, so of course, you know, when you have to go to school because the school is out of the tourist area. Um, so the driver will drop you off and pick you up. So everything safety is, you know, very important. Yeah. And then the rest of it, that's around an 80% of your fee that will go towards that. 20% we use directly for um, the materials that we use uh, in the school, like uh, paper, markers, like scissors, whatever. Uh, but mostly we rely on donations because it's not, the 20% is not enough to buy all those resources. So but we have a lot of great volunteers that bring a lot of stuff, so that's great. Um, the scholarships, uh, so a lot of the kids, um, so after a certain age, so when they're 12, 13, you know, they need to go to school, they need to buy, uh, they need to buy the uniform, their books, they need to be a pay, uh, fee for the schools. As and a pause cannot... for their separate schools. Yeah. So VP Sorry. Bali is an after school program. They're not paying to wear their uniforms to VP Bali. It's a totally separate. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for explaining. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the thing. I'm used to, I know, yeah, very good. She's an <laughs> outsider. Separate, and, yeah. Very good. So they're normal schools before they come. They need to pay for it and because they come from a poor family they actually have a poor certificate uh so 99.9 percent .9 because there is one kid that is actually rich you know and all the rest is one very kid. there's one kid um but they have like literally a poor certificate uh so the kids can normally not you know uh, join the normal education that's where we step in on a monthly basis 
and uh, pay them their uh, education. So that's also a part of that 20% that will go towards there. And then the local salary. So uh, that means like we only work with the Balinese because we do it for them, mm -hmm. but we also want to work with them. So we hire people that have no skills. Uh, we train them. Um, so we learn a new skill and uh, what I try to do is I don't want to give them a standard salary. I give them, I overpay them. <laughs> But it, for me, it's more to, I know it's the other way around, but it's like, for me, it's like, you know, I want to give them not only the opportunity, but also not to worry about the money, because a lot of times, if you want to learn and et cetera, you don't get paid much, mm -hmm. but they need the money because they come, that, yeah. you know, from a poor family, so they really need the money. So if I pay them a little bit more, and then I can learn them some skills, and at the same time, I also learn them how to interact uh, with us Western people. So yeah. what can actually help them later on also in their future. So it's not the point for me that they stay there. Mm -hmm. They can, don't get me right. wrong. But you know, it's also like a sort of a push. So like when they learn more, they can go to a better job. And you know, so it's, it's a direct help also. Because all the translators that are in the rooms are all local. All the people shooting the videos and the photos that you see, they're all local running around with Kat and that skill sets that they've learned through VP yeah. Bali and yeah. now ready to, I mean, it's a huge platform to then go do other yeah. things and kind of get out of that cycle of yeah. poverty and, yeah. and getting the skills because a lot of times they don't learn the skill because they don't have the money. So yeah. they need to, you know, skip school and stop. Yeah, they have to quit school and to go and work as a waiter or waitress, you know, to bring money in for the family because up here they live together with their families. So they need to provide for them. So when you skip your school, even your high school, you know, you don't have a skill. So how can you in the future get more money? You yeah. stagnate. So we want to break that a little bit by learning them not only English, but also learning about different cultures, learning interpersonal skills, but also just normal skills. So, you know, we can say like, okay, now you can do more and you can earn even more. So to, to, to help them push in different ways out of the poverty. So sure, 80% goes to your accommodation and your pickup and 20% is for the program for the kids itself. So local salaries, uh, scholarships and uh, material wise. We do a lot of coloring and a lot of games. Um, and then just to explain, I don't think that this is necessarily very clear. So the kids, as I was saying, they go to school at the beginning half of the day and then VP Bali is after school where we really focus on learning English. So it's something that the kids choose to do after school and it's the most yeah. adorable thing because they are seriously so eager to yeah, learn. Yeah. They're excited to be there. They want to listen to you. They want to play with you. It's amazing. Um, but they're choosing to be there and it's from, we leave around one o'clock in the afternoon yes. and we're there yeah. until around five o'clock in the evening and it's Monday to Thursday. So it's pretty amazing. You get the weekends off and then you can go explore and go to the beach and do this, but then you have some structure during the week, which I personally love because vacation is awesome, but then just sitting around and like drinking a pina colada can kind of get old and then you start to feel shitty about yourself and it's a whole separate issue. But it's a great way to get to experience the local culture and feel like you're doing something while also not feeling like you're not waking up at 7 a.m. No. and working until 7 p.m. No. and trying to do this structured thing where you have to give tests every day. No, it's no tests, no tests. No tests. We, it's fun and you have the mornings to, I go to yoga every morning before and then I go to class and then I go to a nice dinner with my, and it's just like a beautiful structure. So um, that part's really great. Also, it's so, so, so safe. I had a bunch of people and moms reaching out to me um, about wanting to send their kids but not necessarily feeling like mm. it's safe. And I listen to a ton of murder podcasts. I never walk alone at night when I'm home here. I have come here by myself the last two times and I feel totally safe. I walk around at night. I mean, given I go to bed at nine, so it's like not that late at night, but it's still technically dark. Still after nine, it's still safe. Don't worry about <laughs> it. I wouldn't know about the double digits after hours, but... Um, oh, it is really safe. It really yeah. is totally yeah. safe. And the homestay is completely yeah. safe. and. Beyond it just being a safe culture, you're surrounded at the homestay, you're surrounded by your friends the entire time. So you're always gonna have somebody to go to dinner with, you're always gonna have somebody to go to the monkey forest with, to go yeah. on an excursion with. So 
it really builds a community. So if you're traveling alone, it's a great way to do yeah. that and not feel completely by yourself. Yeah, that's it's, it. You used to really, like you say, make friends and you're part of a new family. So like I even have, you know, the family of the homestay sometimes calling me like, you know, because they're not home yet or whatever. And they're, you know, concerned like, can this one is not home yet and this and that. And I'm like, right. okay, let me check the Instagrams and <laughs> <laughs> not that I'm Do really good at it. I'm trying, but I'm like, oh no, it's okay. So, or sometimes they forget or, you know, they, you know, the mom is visiting or they're staying at the hotel and they forgot to tell them. So they're very, very protective also. You know, when you guys are at the homestay, you're part of the family. So mm -hmm. they really take care of you. Uh, even, you know, touch wood, then it doesn't happen. But if you guys are not feeling well, you know, they're always there to take care of you. Yeah. I know, you know, it can feel shitty, you know, you feel sick, you're far away from home. But you have a new family that really extra, you know, take care of yeah. you. So you're not alone. Nice. It's not like, and no, it's not like not you're just all. dropped off in some like rural area no. where you can't see. It's really, yeah. it's a perfect, I think, it's a perfect balance of everything that I would personally want on a trip because it is a big deal to take off your free time and go to a different country and donate your time and da da da. So it is nice to be able to do that and get some yeah. chill time, feel safe. Um, it's a really nice balance. Which yeah, you're I part of the Viti Bali family. <laughs> and you stay part of the Viti Bali family. So the Viti Bali family now is already huge. Yeah. It's big. It's uh, great. Some, yeah. some people want to come back all the time. <laughs> Some of us, yeah, some of us stop. Oh, like, there we go me. again. <laughs> no, no, we have a lot of people coming back. We love it. Yeah. So, uh, so and yeah. a lot of people come because of word of mouth. Like yes. people love it so much, they tell their friends, and then they come back. So yeah. it's it's a really good program. Like you're not getting yourself into something crazy. I mean, no. eh, it's a little crazy, no. but <laughs> no, but <laughs> All I in think, a good way. no, but it's important. You know, for me, it was also important to you know the word of mouth and you know the transparency um you know there are so many scams nowadays and you hear so many things in the media you know, negative yeah. about you know organizations and etc mm -hmm. so that's why um we want to be as transparent as we can be okay. so um so yeah so that's also important so if you get it from word to mouth like we ask them everybody if you can take the time and you know write a review because you know it's your experience and people want to read that yeah because we can post things but you know you know, we want just don't know. other people to tag us or whatever. Are those even it, real kids? Are they from another it. country? Totally. No, you just pick them from like, the street. I swear, these are my questions when I was messaging. And it was, she was just like, oh yeah, this person will pick you up from the airport. I was like, will they pick me up from the airport? Oh, yeah, like, I, I was the crazy, no, I was no, the crazy I person. A lot. So, yes. I, I'm not, I don't blindly just throw myself into things. It really is. It's very well thought out. Really. You've done an amazing job of doing that. Beyond Thank the Thank, actual to program, it's, it's, it, it flows very well. So I feel like those answer some basic questions, yeah. right? So do we want to get into some fun, like how did you actually start VP Bali? Yes, we can do that. Let's Definitely. go for Let's it. Go. So how did, uh, how did we get here right now? Well, so I've been in corporate before and well, of course I wasn't so happy because otherwise I wouldn't change. Um, so I wanted to do something uh, where I could follow my passion and my passion is um, you know, uh, animals and kids, excuse me, uh, because I love pure souls, you know, is what you see is what you get. Um, so, and there is a lot of, you know, we, we can help still a lot of, you know, kids and animals around the world. Uh, secondly, I wanted to be in a place where I felt home. Uh, so I can officially call this my home. I feel very good up here. How long have you been here? Uh, 2012. So yeah, wow. almost eight years. Wow. Yeah. Well, I was here 2011 first, so yeah, so it's like, uh, yeah, getting there. It's, it's and it's, like, when did VP Bali like start? So that? 2012, I did all the preparations, like a uh, website. You don't want it to see the first website. I was nothing compared. <laughs> but you know, you learn, you know, I had to learn also. You know? I, I don't even know how to remotely start a website. So, so yeah, so you're a uh, genius in my eyes. Thank you. Well, well I'm trying. <laughs> Uh, so 2012, we did uh, preparations, and then uh, 2013, January 2013, I had my first volunteer coming. I, I suck in names, but I will never forget, she was from Canada. So, uh, <laughs> go Canada, uh, and go also the other countries, but I uh, don't want to offend anybody. Um, yeah, I used to, you know, pick you guys up from the airport. Uh, we didn't have any staff because I wanted to be really, you know, hands-on. Um, you know, from A to Z, knowing the ins and the outs um, and do it very differently. So for me, I think the most important thing was to actually, I wanted to do something meaningful for 
myself. Of mm -hmm. course, you need to be realistic. You need to earn money. Yeah. <laughs> That's one thing. So you know, uh, so you need to have businesses and etc. to have your money. But at the other side, I wanted to also spend my time in something meaningful. Um, so uh, Bali really matched my personal list. It would check everything like weather-wise. People are always smiling. Uh, there is still a lot of opportunities up here. Um, you know the philosophy itself, and and I was especially also I think so that was more on a personal level that it would fit with my person as a you know my character. Yeah. You know it really fit. Um, but you know secondly, it really surprised me that you know seeing a country that like country an island that is actually so developed with so many tourists every year it's so instagrammable mm -hmm. uh, and it looks so nice and if you see at the other side there is still so much poverty it's still a third world country yeah. and i'm like huh it doesn't really make sense and people don't really see that when they travel up here so for me i misanalyze you know i wanted to analyze why this is and how can we you know uh, create solutions like on mid and on long term yeah. um, and that was actually also my goal with starting VP Bali I wanted to be different like um, in that way like I wanted to be not like the other organizations I was like okay let's put our priorities backwards like you know why you know yes I can set up you know an organization and say like I get a lot of funding and I hire a lot of people and my marketing is good and then a percentage will go to the actual cause for me personally, I'm not judging anybody else, but for me personally, I think it's wrong. So I was like, okay, let's do it the hard way. I'm like, I'm gonna do it backwards. Well, that's me. I don't just always. I have. Make I'm that difficult. Let's make it so <laughs> difficult, right? So I was like, no, we're not gonna do that. I want to give everything for the cost first. And for me personally, it is like you know when you see like somebody who is struggling with whatever it is, um, so there is a poverty, like, you know, you need to analyze the problem and see like, okay, how can we help them now, on mid-long and on long-term? Because the actual goal of an organization is that on long-term, I don't need to be here anymore because you want to inspire future, you know, generations and make sure that you can teach them skills or whatever your solution is. Uh, so they make sure that on long term, you know, we don't, they don't need us up right. here. Self-sufficient and it's run That's by it. the community. That's it. it. Yeah. We're not a money-making business and saying like, you know, yes, you operate it as a business, of course, because it needs to be structured and etc. But you are a nonprofit. So I was very disappointed in general when I volunteered or I fundraised, like I never knew where the money was going. It was not like an even a thank you, like, you know, I don't have to have balloons and flowers, right. but you know, just a little bit of appreciation right. because, you know. It's a big you, deal when you're giving your time. That's it. You yeah. guys are, you know, the volunteering is for free. You're helping, you know, you're helping families, you're helping the kids, but you're donating your time. What is actually a really big thing, you know, so a little bit, you know, appreciation, you know. So for me, that was important to be transparent, knowing where, you know, that everybody who's involved with it, that means volunteers, uh, staff, whatever, it needs to be transparent, like knowing the ins and the outs. And yes, I've been focusing first on the kids and that will always be my priority. And then slowly, slowly, you know, we can go like what we want to do now is more in focusing on funding and etc. But my priority is the kids. So like everything, like 100%, like 100% is almost impossible, but the majority of your money goes to actually the cause and not like one or 3% like other organizations mm -hmm. and then to salaries. No, right. it is the opposite. Right. And the fancy videographers and the fancy marketing no. team and the fancy da da da. No, no it's like yeah. actually, and, and you see that, like you're in the classrooms, it's full of all the materials, it's, yeah. And knowing that you're working directly with the locals. So it's not just like, this colonization culture almost. That's you're it. Really, That's it. You're keeping it in the community, which I think yeah. really separates it. And well. that is important. So, and yes, of course, you know, you need to be realistic. We need more funding, and if we want to be sustainable, and we want to do more projects and etc. But now is the time to start doing that because we have already the program, you know, for you know six years. Right. So I know the ins and the outs. I made a lot of mistakes. Thank God for that because I learned. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's you know, you need to make a lot of mistakes to learn. Um, but you know, I'm confident. I know you know what is happening inside, what is needed, what is not needed. It's a you know, it's it's a work in progress because we always need to improve ourselves. Uh, but now I feel like you know I'm ready to you know to focus more on the funding and etc. And especially you know like inspire people, and that's not just the volunteers, yeah. 
but you know other people because I know not everybody can come and give their time or volunteer or come to Bali but it's more about you know creating that awareness I think that was for me important uh, that you know um, everybody can help you don't need to dedicate you know your lifetime or you know a, a whole week or you don't need to travel mm -hmm. you know if you just smile every day to people you know that's also already yeah. a big thing you can have more deal. people than yeah. you think you Absolutely. know so <laughs> it's not like with VP Bali we're helping the kids but it's it's right. the, the bigger thing it's more creating awareness that people right. are more aware and like maybe more think like let's be a little bit more kind and where can we help and help is not money wise you know, help can be just, you know, be more friendly or, you know, smile or, you know. You don't have to go become like an isolated monk to no, help no, change not the at world. All. It can be yeah. uh, donating your clothes. You can just smile at somebody. There's many ways yes. to help Absolutely without, help. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't have to be your lifetime. And that's probably. it. And I think that's a little bit the concept also of VP Bali. We're working now with the volunteers, you know, um, you know, uh, they gain a lot out of that. Uh, the Absolutely. kids gain a lot out of it. But now we want to go to the next step and we're working a lot with also contributors. So those people who don't get paid, they have certain skills, they come to workshops or they work on remote or etc. So we are involved with a lot of people around the world that helping VP Bali. But, you know, it's great because sometimes you have people making great videos up here, like very yeah. professional. I cannot do you that. You mean not my professional video? <laughs> <laughs> Almost good, almost good. Like almost we said, good. like we yeah, said, we don't say about. no at VP uh, Bali, so everything's no. almost good. Almost good. good. <laughs> almost good. This is almost a good video. <laughs> almost a good video. We're getting there. Yeah, we need to make some mistakes. So, yeah, no, but it's nice, and you know, people share share their skills, and it gives also the transparency of, uh, you know, VP Bali. And why do I have to put kind of budget from VP Bali towards? you know a videographer and you know that would cost me a lot of money it's for marketing i know we need it but no yeah. so you know you have time come over and we have a great video and sometimes it's not but it's you know it's fine right. if we don't have that which i actually i totally forgot to ask that so if somebody isn't able to contribute <laughs> if somebody isn't able to contribute um two weeks of their time to actually come and volunteer what would be other ways that people can contribute um like in how have people contributed in the past that haven't been physically here in bali uh there are some people that have been uh working on remote remote um so for example i've been doing some presentations uh you know abroad and they were like no it looks good but you know maybe the design could be a little bit better i'm very good with InDesign. if you want i'll do that for you for free so uh they've been working you know on you know more uh, making it look nice on right. InDesign. website uh, stuff uh we have people sometimes that uh you know our web designer uh he gives her a big discount and he helps me whenever i can because i'm learning so yeah. he's always there for me so i'm <laughs> like i'm calling him and he's like oh don't worry do it like this and i'm like i can't make it work don't worry i'll do that right so um, we have, uh, we had somebody from, uh, so it could be on remote, like you say, like, you know, uh, we have people translating for us or, you know, my English is not perfect, you, you can hear that. <laughs> um, so when I've been writing text or whatever, uh, I send it uh, to somebody and they uh, recheck everything. Mm -hmm. So grammar wise and those stuff. So right. that's also nice. And, you know, it doesn't take that much time. Mm -hmm. uh, we have people on the spot uh, that people that live up here yeah. and sometimes they would come and take some extra pictures, uh, especially for me, because people want me to be in it. Yeah. When I'm behind the camera, it's difficult. Um, so that's also nice. Um, we have people just visiting Bali and say like, okay, I can make a video, I can make a workshop. We have like, um, we had like sport teachers coming over. Um, Do like a workshop. Thing. We like... had uh, yoga workshops. Uh, uh, we have it linked to our recycling workshops or health. So we had doctors coming over, dentists coming over to speak mm -hmm. and do a workshop. Uh, so it can go, you know, anywhere. Like, you know, it's it's very open. We had somebody from Google coming up. He's like, you know, you're an organization. Use, you know, Google nonprofit. And I said, yeah, well, I'll use it. But, yeah, but you have ads for free, that amount. And I'm like, I tried it. I'm not, I'm okay with that. But I was like... <laughs> I couldn't make it work and he's like well yeah. it's not so user friendly so he came over a day and you know set it up all for me so now i have every year i have a grant to spend for free ads and that that one day makes a really big impact for vp Bali, you know so he was there one day you know and if i have questions i can always email him so it really it really depends i think a, the best thing is 
you know, if you really want to help and contribute, uh, just contact us, um, send an email, and then I'm always available, uh, you know, to talk. We can do a WhatsApp call or whatever it is, and then we can make it work. Um, so whatever skill you have, you can always help. So, um, and that's the most important thing. We want to, you know, group people together. Uh, and whether that's here or from your bed. Yeah. I mean, we all, I don't know. I don't know how to use a computer, but I'm sure some of you guys know how to use a computer and like maybe make a website or make it look prettier yeah, and spell check or you know how to actually use Google or it's... Whatever it yeah, is, it can be from your help. sofa at home. It can be, you know, during when you're big or you're bored at work and you want to, you know, have a <laughs> half an hour break, don't tell your boss. Uh, so you can do that. Also, you actually here on a holiday and... You know you know you want to contribute something you know um, we're open for some for everything so i think the most important thing is just you know pop an email um i'm always free uh you know to talk and we can talk a little bit more further um and you know if it can for us maybe you can do it in your own neighborhood so that's the most important thing yeah. maybe there's people around you very near that need your help uh, so that's actually your goal. It's creating the awareness that we don't need to get, you know, paid. It's just sharing your time, even if it's five minutes. So, um, so yeah, so you can always help mm -hmm. wherever you are. So that's a good segue. So volunteer programs forever yeah. is now, I don't want to butcher it, but a larger, not a company, but it's like a, a It's a foundation. It's a private foundation. So it's based in Europe, Belgium. So it's a private foundation. So uh, that means the status is quite high. Um, so when companies uh, want to actually donate, uh, they have a tax refund for that. Right. So, you get tax uh, right off. so in general, a lot of the organizations don't have that. Yeah. Uh, so that's the benefit uh, of that. And VP Valley is a project uh, from VP Forever. So I really. Like I said in the beginning, I did everything backwards. You know, yeah. I wanted to focus on the pilot project myself and did right, all the not establish this amazing no. nonprofit. Like first, no. actually focus on the project. Be in the field, know what you're yeah. talking about, make those mistakes, mm -hmm. hit all those walls, cry a lot, eat, eat ice cream in the evening in your bed, like oh my god, what did I do? Like, oh. but you know, you know. Yeah. So oh, I know. Uh, yeah. So for me, it was like like um, yeah, that was important for me to yeah. to be there and still be there, you know, with VP Bali. I'm, you know, people can meet me and etc. Um, so with this project now, um, we want to make it really sustainable, and so and we're really focusing on getting the funding in from VP for VP Forever because mm -hmm. VP Forever is supporting VP Bali. And so the more funding we can get in, we can make this project, VP Bali, the pilot project sustainable, what our actual goal is. If this is sustainable, then that's our goal is to go to all different countries to help and do other projects. Right. Those projects would be very different. So this is a, being an ongoing project where uh, the other projects I wanted to have like, you know, a start and sort of an ending date. Mm -hmm. For example, somebody don't have uh, drinking water in a certain village. So we raise the funding, uh, we go up there, um, and then we install the water, etc. But we also give the education of uh, why is it important, you know, to drink water and you know, and clean water and etc. So that we leave something behind. Right. All right. So whatever it is, it could be animals, environment, education in a bigger word of the meaning. But we want to have a starting and an ending. Doesn't mean that we don't care about them anymore. No. Well, but, and I think it's nice to be able to give people the tools to then. That's you it. don't always need to have people in your yeah. life. You know, the idea yeah. is that the communities can. Yeah. do it themselves which... yeah and this project is like a longer project because my goal is in 30 years that you know they can be you know that, that we, we reached like you know um, some future generations so that they can do it themselves but it's you know you have to, to think on long term mm -hmm. but there is always also a lot of people around this world where you can help you know on short term and then straight away have that result yeah. um, so that they don't need those 30 years right, right? So that is more the goal, so we can reach more people around the world and create more awareness. So have VP Bali be the pilot project. Yeah. And through that success, I mean, it's like that turned out so well, be able to expand and do that yeah. other places, which yeah. I think is really cool because it's a way to actually make it personal. So beyond being able to donate your time, your money, your skill sets, if there's a project or something that is really close to your heart, something that you've seen and, um, you feel like there could be a change, it's worth 
emailing and seeing if there's a way to yeah. make that work. Like go for it together, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's not about, you know, one man can do so much, one woman right. can do so much, you know, yeah. it's not that we're one world, we're people from the world, you know, it's so easy nowadays, you know, with, you know, all the, you know, Instagram communication technology, what is it? So, uh, so to yeah. connect everybody together and then I think we can make, you know, a big difference, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a lot of people that just need that little push. So, yeah. so if people wanted to donate um, money how and get a tax write-off very exciting <laughs> that's important um what's the easiest way to do that to donate to the volunteer programs forever yes so uh, all the donations come in to volunteer programs forever um so you can go directly to the website we put the link uh in there um so you can do it through paypal or you can do it directly on the bank account so with paypal you always need to give it certain percentage but that's up to you if it's easier or you can uh, just um, do directly on the bank you can always contact us and then uh, you can just do a transfer and similarly if I mean we talked about this before but if you want to donate money to VP Bali specifically and have and know exactly where that's going you can say I want it I'm going to donate this amount and I want that to go towards kids scholarships for school yeah. for example and then that's a possibility yes, as well definitely it's, yeah because we had that in the past and are and still going on, mostly it is from volunteers uh, or people that are very close or been already here because right. it is important see. for you guys, you know, also to see that because, you know, there is a lot of scams also. Totally. Um, so some people are like, no, we trust you, you do whatever you want. Right. And some people are like, no, you know, I want to, you know, do it specifically for the scholarships. Right. Um, I've been giving some monthly reports to some people. Some people are like, no, uh-uh. So it really depends. It takes right. more time for me. Um, but I don't care because for me personally, that's what I would want. If I would, you know, donate, um, I would want to know where it goes. Um, so yeah, so I think the more I can help and, and, and see how, the more I can show you guys how transparent it is, I'm willing, you know, right. to put that time and effort in there because that for me would be also very important. Right. You want to know that you're actually... Yeah, that it, it's going to where it needs right. to go. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. So that's Always important. Good to know, right? Well, I think it's quite important. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we were so you were talking about it earlier. What is the um, long term goal for VP Bali? Because I think that sounded so cool. Where you were explaining almost like this self sustaining, yeah, growing food, being able to sell it, kind of creating a community within the community yes. to. Like you say, we want to create like a community in the community. So now we have the English classes. Uh, we have a culture program where we still preserve the local culture because we are not colonists. We do everything by respect for the local culture. We yeah. want to integrate, adapt, look at the problems, and then you know create solutions yeah. that are in line with their culture, of course. Um, so we work on interpersonal skills and etc. Now what we want to do is creating like uh, we want to expand a little bit more and saying like okay, let's. Uh, now uh, get a land of our own of VP Bali we need to rent it up here for 30 years because that's a good amount of time mm -hmm. it's it's realistic uh, build our own school um, so we can continue the classes uh, but at the same time create a community in that community like we want to put the homestay up there uh, we want to put animals up there we want to have our little farm uh, we have like you know uh, like some uh, rice fields we have local people working there so there is fresh festival fresh um, you know, fruit, you know, the rice and etc. And then what we can do is that we can give more job employment to, you know, yeah. local people. Yeah. And then, then the, the crops that they grow, then, you know, they can sell them. So there is money, you know, it's sustainable. The money comes in, you know, with that money, it's paying their salary. Home safe, for example, we can put our older kids, they all want to work in hotels up here in tourism. Yeah. So they, you know, they're scared of shit because they need yeah, to, you know, sure. they need to Talking talk to, to people all, in another language. It. It's awful. It is, <laughs> and especially for the Balinese culture yeah. because they do not communicate. Mm -hmm. So while they are with the volunteers, you know, they have a, a training job. So they're there and they're getting paid so that money will go directly to them then and they can practice in a very safe environment with people that they know. So um, we want to create like, you know, we have our own kitchen space and etc. so we can have many famous chefs coming over and you know, give them a workshop to the kids for, you know, a week or something, or even if it's a day, because they want to, you know, they're going to be, right. you know, cooking or waitressing or whatever it is, so they can come in contact with different people. Uh, so, yeah, creating that small community in the community. I I think so, and it's nice because the money that goes in and that they make, well, you know, 
you know, help them for their salaries so they can be, you know, right. it's sustainable, it's self-sufficient, so, you know, it, it's perfect. But for that, you know, we need the funding to, to get our own school, because right. now we're always renting that's like the long term goal. Yes. I just, I, yeah. that really yeah. spoke to me. I think that's so cool. No, and, it, and it's fun because you, get, you guys could be really in that community, you know? Yeah. So it, it's nice, and you see everything even more from A to Z. So mm -hmm. it's, it's fun. It's like that small village where you go in the morning and say, like, okay, let's you know, get some fruit, you know? Right. Uh, let's get Which some then it really does help so much because it's yeah. the practicing of talking, and yeah, it, yeah it's tourism is the biggest industry here yes, so definitely to be really good at that yeah. you get to go from working as a waitress to a manager which is a big deal that, yeah I mean, definitely definitely and, and a lot of times you know they they will never get there because they don't have those interpersonal skills they don't have the english knowledge you know they know nothing about the other cultures so it will always mostly goes to people from other islands uh, or yeah. maybe Western people. So we want to break that a little bit and also give them the opportunity to learn in a safe environment. Uh, so, and it doesn't matter, you know, it's not just that everybody needs to be a manager or whatever, but, you know, also people that are just growing crops, you know, or working on the rice fields, you know, it needs to be appreciated. We need to keep that up here also. Right. So we want to, you know, encourage also the younger ones to, you know, learn that skill mm -hmm. but you know in an keep organic bali, bali. yeah <laughs> keep bali bali and the reason you know, we love it that's it because preserving the culture is also important yeah. but you know instead of doing chemicals you know doing it organically you know so you know there's so many ways we can help it's, it's about that balance like okay we want them to give you know more opportunities so they can get out of this poverty but at the same time you know we still need to preserve that culture um, so it's 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 a fine line. So, so important, and it, it is important. We're not yeah. here to tell them what to do. We're not Absolutely. colonists, you know. It's right. it's like it's we know best. Balance. This is what no. It's really understanding yeah. their culture, and then maybe just giving tools to yeah make that even better. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's very important. Yeah, I feel like. I hope we answered at least a few of your so. questions and um, give you even more information. Uh, Feel free to reach out to me or email Kim directly. So that is info at volunteerprogramsbali.org. Yes. Or go on their website at volunteerprogramsbali.org. That's uh, it. I'm always good. here to answer all your questions. Thank you for, <laughs> for all your effort and time. I love you. Uh, so it's been a big help. Um, so and especially for coming back for the second time. Of course. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. I'll see you soon. <laughs> I'll be back. You're stuck. With oh, me. yeah, of course. <laughs>